we did systems with linear. We did systems by graphing, where the two straight lines intersected at a point or were parallel, or they were on top of each other, we had no solution, we had no solution, or they're on top of each other, we had infinitely many. We graphed or we solved the substitution and we solved with elimination. You are now going to do the same thing with systems of equations, except now we are going to have linear and quadratic. So, just a review of our systems. What is a system of equation if we are taking a look at that? Systems of equation is an equation that has two or more equations using the same variables to solve the problem. And this is usually where you get a solution of x comma y. So this is usually when you had, when you had linear, you only had one solution, x comma, comma y. We now will have either two solutions, one solution, or no solution. So how did we solve before when we were um, looking at our equations? When we solved systems, one of the first things we started off with was graphing. We found the point of intersection. I'm going to show you that with the quadratic and the linear but we are going to be much more focused because sometimes it's hard to graph those quadratics and it takes a lot of time. Our linear is a little easier if you get it in point slope or slope intercept. We are going to be focusing on, if we look at this unit, the substitution. That's when you solve one equation for either x or y and you substitute it in. The last one is the elimination, and these are going to be the two that we will concentrate on the most. Okay? Elimination is when you add the two equations and something cancels. In our case, it's almost always going to be the y that's going to cancel. You're going to make one, we're going to multiply by either negative one, one of the equations, or the other ones, because a lot of times slope intercept is y equals mx plus b. Quadratic is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So we're going to set it up that way. Are you guys ready if I go on? So when you take a look at problem one down below on your notes, it says when solving a system by graphing, we look at any points of intersection. There may be more than one point. There may be none. If the graphs, graphs are identical, there could also be infinitely many. So if we are taking a look at these two graphs, or these two equations, let's do the linear first. If I'm graphing y equals negative 2x plus 5, okay? So we're going to do this one in red. That means my start point is where? 5. And the slope is? Negative 2. So think about that face. Should it be going up to the right or down to the right? Down. Down. And we should go down 2 and over 1, right? Okay? And I will be getting you graph paper as you're looking at these. So what we now want to take a look at is we have this nice line here. And now we want to graph our other equation. And in this one, it's kind of a nice quadratic. And so if I do ask you to solve by graphing, do you want to put your computer here? If you are asked to graph by solving, um, solve by graphing, I'm probably going to give you decent, nice equations. And in this one, if you think of your x, y table, what do we know our vertex is? Where is our vertex at? Y zero equals 2x. It's at 0, 1, right? Yeah. So I know I have at 0, 1. And my problem is going up. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to have two solutions. I'm probably going to have like a solution here, somewhere over here where it's going to cross the line, and somewhere over here. So. If I know 0, I might plug in 1, right? If I plug in 1 to that equation, 1 squared gives us 1, plus 2, times 2, plus 1, 1 at 3, right? 2 plus 1 would give us 3. So, so I have this point. Oh, I already have one of my solutions, right? One solution is going to be 2, 3. And I can see my parabola is going up. 1. So now I think, oh, i got to have one on this side. And we do know that at this point, this would be a solution. So I really don't need to find negative 1. So I think I'm going to try for negative 2, right? 
So if I plug in negative two, and some of you, that's where your calculators are, who are smarter than your calculators. It is two times negative two squared. You're squaring a negative plus one, which means you have four or two times four, right? This is a positive four plus one. And at two, we get nine, which I do would know that I have nine on my side. It is a narrower parabola. And so my two solutions to the problem, if I am looking at this, are going to be 1 comma 3 and negative 2 comma 9. And if you're not sure you did it right, the nice thing about any time you do systems is you can check your answer. So if I am checking negative 2, 9, I know it works in this quadratic because I just did that. So I want to check it in my linear. And if I plug it into the linear equation, y equals negative 2 times negative 2 plus 5. 4 plus 5, it gives me 9, and that checks in my linear. If I wanted to go back to that point 1, 3, I know 1, 3 is part of this equation, and I know it's part of this one, so my, my work here kind of showed that check, okay? So as you are looking for. All right, so that's the graphing. Solutions if we are using substitution. Do we have one variable equal to something when you look at this equation? Yes, we have y equals what? x squared. Plus 11x minus 12. So we are going to go to the first equation, and in place of putting this y, you're going to substitute it. What are we substituting? x squared plus 11x minus 12. Then we had minus 30 equals 12x. And the reason we just had our last test on solving quadratics is that you now have to get this equal to 0. And if you can't factor or find square roots, you would use the quadratic equation. And in this case, we are going to subtract 12x from both sides. And as I do that, I'm left with x squared minus 1x minus 42 equals 0. And I look at this and think, I'm not going to use the quadratic, right? I can easily factor. I don't want to tell me my two factors. Okay. Well, negative 7 and 6. I'm going to have x minus 7 and x plus 6 equals 0, which means when I solve it, I'm putting x minus 7 equals 0, x plus 6 equals 0, some of you kind of got mixed up when you were solving on your um, tests, um, how you set those equal. But our two solutions we've just found is we have x is 7 and x is negative 6. We have only found the x value, right? x equaled these two values. In order for it to be a system, I need the y values. So which equation do you want to go to to solve the y? First or second, the linear or the quadratic? Probably the linear one, right? So we have y, and we could rewrite that, right, as 12x plus 30 by adding 30 to both sides. So I'm going to take 12 times negative 7 plus 30 and get my y value. And I am also going to take y equals 12 times 6. What's that? Ah, positive 7, negative 6. Oh, thank you. Positive 7, negative 6. Which hopefully I would have seen that in my chat, right? When I plugged it in here. So, as you are multiplying those, please do that. Some of you don't have a calculator yet. Or a quadratic, and you would not have a parenthesis. Some of you on the test put this as an ordered pair. If you put a parenthesis around this, you're telling me this is x and this is y. You're not telling me they're both x. So you've got to be careful. So we should have had at 7, what was our value? 114. And at negative 6, we should have had negative 42. So these are my two solutions. Now, we used our linear equation to solve it. So my hint might be, go back in here and please put in your calculator. 7 squared, so do this now. Equals 11 times 7 minus 12. 
Plug that in your calculator. And if you also plug in negative 6 squared plus 11 times negative 6 minus 12, and you should get your two values that we had for our y's when we did that. Okay? So every time you do these problems, you can do the check to make sure you are on it. Okay? The next page, part down, which both of those should have checked if you were plugging it in. That next page going down in your notes says solving with using elimination. So here's the story problem situation. It says since opening day, pool A increased steadily while attendance at pool B rose and fell. Um, equations modeling the attendance, Y for each pool is shown below where X is the number of days it's been open. On the days that attendance was the same in both, what are the days that attendance was the same in both pools? And what was the attendance? That means we are trying to find both the y, how many people were in attendance, and the days x. Here were our two equations. 28x, y equals 28x plus 4. The second one, negative x squared, which we already know that parabola is going down, right? And if we're thinking of our linear equation, it should be going a straight line going up, right? Positive slope. So when we are thinking of this with elimination, notice what they did was they took that second equation, or one of the equations, in this case, they took this um, slope-intercept one, the linear, and multiplied everything by negative 1, added it together, negative x squared plus 11x plus 60. They then got it equal to 0, which it already was. They factored out a negative 1. Some of you on that last project missed that factoring out a negative 1, and then you thought that that was like part of your solution. Um, so this just tells us that my problem goes down. Then they factored 60 to be plus Four and negative 15 got our two solutions. They plugged it in, and when they were looking at it, one of them didn't make sense. You can't have negative four days if you went to the pool, right? So it had to be on, this case, day 15. You can't go back to negative four days before the pool opened, right? And then they figured out it had 422. Okay? So when you're doing the problems tonight in your homework, you're doing 11 to 16, 21 to 23 all. Um, there's not a ton of problems, but you're going to be doing one of each type, substitution, elimination. Right? So let's take a look at this last page in your notes. So if we are looking at this system, my hint would be, I think a lot of times, because your x squared is already positive, you usually want to have your x squared positive. So we are going to take, if we're using elimination, we're going to eliminate our y's, and we are going to multiply this whole second equation by negative 1, which means I am now going to have negative y, negative x, and negative 1. Now here's the key thing. Make sure that you think of lining this up back here with the, negative, with the like terms, okay? So right below x squared, I have nothing that I'm adding with x squared. y plus negative y is 0. x squared, I'm not adding any like terms. That leaves me with x squared. Negative 2x minus x is going to leave me with negative 3x. And 1 plus negative 1 is 0. So this is even easier to factor than the other one. Although most of you try to do quadratic formula and many other things, you don't think there's a factor. The greatest common factor is x. And then you are left with x minus 3 equals 0. So one solution is that x is 0. The other solution is that x minus 3 equals 0, so x equals 3. So when we were looking at our equations up here, and we had y equals x, plus 1 was our original equation, it's going to be pretty easy to find the y value, right? When x is 0, I plug in 0 and I should get 1. And I'm going to plug in, so when x was 0, I get 1 for y. And if I plug in 3, 3 plus 1 gives me 4. And I just want to check that. And if I check the 0 here, that makes sense in the quadratic, right? Because this part will be 0, and I'm left with just 1. And if I plug in 3, 3 squared is 9 minus 
6 plus 1, so 9 minus 6 plus 1, that does give us 4 for our other point. So it checks in both. So you kind of want to do a quick mental check of both. All right, next question. Boom, cannon fires into the air. Following the parabola in the diagram, the land slopes upward at a slope of 0.15. What are the coordinates? Um, what coordinates does the can cannon, um, if we are looking at this, and the ball, when do they, the land on that hill, when is the cannon going to hit the land? So, the first thing we want to be thinking about is what are our e two equations if we are looking at this one. So, we look at our two equations that are up here. And the question is, how do we want to do this? Substitution or elimination? I would definitely say substitution. I would put this 0.15x equal to this whole equation, right? So I don't need to write the two equations again, but I am going to put 0.15x equals the shape of the parabola, which was 2 plus 0.12x minus 0.00x. Now, if I don't like working with such small numbers, I am probably going to put this in my calculator, but I might want to multiply everything by, to get rid of my decimals, what would you multiply by? A thousand. So I have none. Okay. So I'm going to have 150x equals 2,000 plus 120x minus 2x, and this should have been x squared, my fault in writing that, 2x squared. I am now going to set it equal to 0, and I always want my x squared to be positive. So instead of subtracting 150, I'm going to like add 2x squared right over here. I'm going to subtract 120x, and I'm going to subtract 2,000 from both sides. Because I want my 2x squared to be positive, I'm going to have minus, if we are subtracting that, um, 30x and minus 2,000. Do we have a greatest common factor? Mm -hmm. Plus 30. We're going to subtract 120. It should be plus 30. Thank you. So if we are starting to factor, greatest common factor, let's get that out, is 2. F squared plus 15x minus 1,000. Could we factor to get 1,000 that adds to 15? So, 20, 20, did you say? Not 20, but what? 40. 40 and what? 40 and 25. X, and in this case it has to be a plus 40, right? And X minus 25 equals 0. Okay? Right. Now that 2 out in front, when we're solving it, can I set 2 equal to 0? No. So when I'm solving, I don't have to worry about fact leaving that there. But I'm going to have x plus 40 equals 0, which means x is negative 40. Can we go back in time? No, so it can't be negative 40. So x equals 25. And it says, what are the coordinates when the cannon and the ball land? So we're trying to find these two together. So we don't just want the x coordinate, we want the x and the y. So we have 25. So to me, the easiest one to plug it in is take 0.15 times 25. 0 0.15 times 25, 3.75. So I have 25, 3.75. Okay. So when you are looking at your homework, I ask you to do elimination and substitution. We are not going to do any graphing, just because the graphing of the parabola takes quite a bit of time. So.